and welcome to the Idea Space podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hi, welcome back to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy. And today I'm telling you about the time when my husband left on Mother's Day. And though it's not as dramatic as it sounds, I have definitely made it pretty dramatic for several years. So every year, actually five times a year, my husband has to travel for an entire week. What he does is he takes um, college students to different cities and takes them into the entrepreneurial world. They go to startups, they go to big companies, they go to small companies, but he teaches young college students, about 20 at a time, what it's like to be an entrepreneur in real life. And each year on this particular trip in May, uh, he has to leave on Mother's Day. And for years, it has pissed me right the F off. And I want you to think like a grown woman pouting, huffing, complaining, and having self-pity to a little bit of a ridiculous degree. Now, he's always traveled. His name is John, and he's always traveled. He's traveled for work. He's, you know, he's, he sometimes goes on like a boy trip for a weekend. And I have to say, I have resented it deeply for much of our relationship, especially once I became a mom, because I felt like it left me to do all the parenting and disciplining and all the schlepping and everything by myself. I really rely a lot on my husband. So when he's gone, I really feel that he's gone because he's just one of those those partners who like does so much around the house that he's really a great partner. But even when we were just dating, when we were single and kidless, I really resented his travel a lot. Especially when I was younger, I would think like, doesn't he want to be with me all the time? And I kind of, I kind of laugh at my younger self now because this is such a cringeworthy story, but it's fun to make fun of myself. And it's fun to make this point that I really used to complain a lot about his travel. And if you remember my whole theme for the month of May is looking at ourselves in a new way, you know, new beginnings and blooming. And so I've been looking at this month when he traveled, he left on Mother's Day like he does every time. And I had a very different reaction than I have in the past. You know, in the past, he's gotten exasperated with me and he's like, Jen, it's not like I'm on vacation. I'm not at a spa. You know, he he works from like 7.30 in the morning till 11.30 at night with these kids debriefing and, and teaching them. This is, you know, this is all true. I all I know this all to be true. But for a long time in my head, none of that mattered. All I cared about was that he wasn't home and I was kind of a baby about it. But I started to notice over the last few years as the more I've done this personal development work and trying to see the things that bother me as a way into myself a weird thing has happened. The more he traveled, the more I got used to it. It also helps that my son has gotten older and can deal more easily with his dad being gone. But like Jack, I've grown up in a sense. I don't need John home to do all the things with me and I don't need to rely on him for everything. The other thing I started to notice as I did this introspective work was that he loves the travel. He loves the students. He actually loves his work. His work is so varied. You know, I, I honestly can't keep track of his numerous income streams. He's got like nine different things that he does. He just, he loves to have a really varied, thriving, you know, professional life. And so what I've realized over the last few years is that an aspect of our relationship that used to be a strain is now something that gives us each space to explore what we love and to become more aware of who we are. And 
I also must admit that it's really nice to have a husband who travels the world and is comfortable in any ridiculous, uncomfortable situation because when I'm with him and I'm traveling with him, it it just makes it so much easier for me. It makes it so much more pleasant for me. And I respect him so much for the talents he has in this realm because frankly, I couldn't do it. There's no way that I could do it. It would break me. I would be awful to live with if I had to travel for my work the way he does. And now to deal with his travel and for being alone for a week at a time, I really try to find the gifts in it. I mean, first of all, the gift is he's the main, the main breadwinner in our family. And I, you know, I, I'm so grateful for that because it gives me freedom to run my business and grow my business. His travel is work and it's vital to how we live our lifestyle and the freedom that we have. And I, I really needed to see that gift. The other thing is he's happy when he's working. If I asked him to stop traveling and get a nine to five job, he would be miserable. And then the other thing that I noticed, the gift here, is that when he's gone, I get a lot of little freedoms. Like the number one thing that I love is the entire bed is mine when he's gone. But mostly I've learned that I can do hard things without him there to take care of it all, all the time. So I've proven some pretty cool shit to myself. And when we stop for a minute and take a look, we can see our wins. I bet you've proven some pretty cool shit to yourself if you take a look. Tough moments can become our greatest gifts. And here's an example from real life. I had a client call me in tears about a difficult customer who challenged her pricing. The customer had said with a little haughtiness, your price is so high, which of course sent my sweet client into a tailspin and she called me to rehash and troubleshoot. And I told her, that client is a gift. We processed it together, her feelings of incompetence and stupidity, imposter syndrome rearing its head as it always does, and the anger and the injustice she felt. We we worked through it all. Because we've all been there, right? Something or someone is difficult and we want to complain. We want to languish in it. But maybe there's a gift for for you in there. Maybe, you know, you might just not know what it is yet and you don't need to beat yourself up about it. When I asked my client, what can you learn from this? What is she teaching you? My earnest, willing, highly coachable, wonderful client realized that all she had to do was show her value. If her customer can't see that, it's not her job to convince her. And after that, my client was ready for anything this customer threw at her. She also went on to create a sheet of responses for herself to price objections and learned to truly show her value to her customers. She was never afraid of another client phone call or complaint after that again. I loved watching her become a badass and really own her value. Does she get uncomfortable? Of course, but now she knows she can handle it because she'd been given the gift of a pain in the ass situation to deal with. So what pain in the ass situation are you currently dealing with and what's the gift inside of it? Now, if you're married to your misery, you're not going to find the gift. You have to shift your mindset. You have to get quiet with yourself and ask, what's the gift here? Is business not going so well? Is your relationship not going so well? Is your self-care not going so well? The conflict is a gift, but you must stop long enough to see what it is. And sometimes we can't see it for ourselves. We get stuck in loops that keep us feeling low, keep us from taking action, keep us from seeing our value. Your job is not to convince others of your value. Your job is to see your own value. That, my friend, is the work. And it really is work because it's not easy. It's why coaches exist. It's why therapists exist. It's why we have to ask for help. Because if we could do this work on our own, we'd already have done it. What's the gift in your current shitty situation? And how can you make it work for you? You might need support around this. If you need someone who's not going to judge you, who's going to honor who you are, you know where I am. Reach out and let's talk. Apply for a breakthrough call to work through what you want and where you're stuck. 
Stop feeling shitty in a recurring situation. Shift it and get your power back. I promise you it can be done. I hope this episode is helpful in helping you get there. And I look forward to seeing you on the next podcast. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.